Welcome to our first presentation on DNA structure and function. The purpose of this presentation is to familiarize yourself with what DNA is made up of and how it works. On the, on the left is a model with little spheres of a DNA molecule. DNA has become the modern fingerprint in the, in the, of the world. You know from CSI, many different uh, high-profile murder trials, DNA is used to prove if a person was at the scene, if their blood was there. It is very important that we understand what DNA is. It has profound medical benefits, heredity, stem cell research, genetic disorders, engineering crops, certain crops that will be disease resistant, bigger fruits, stronger skin, and it's very important in medical cases. And most importantly, why we learn about DNA is because it makes up everything that you are. In 1958, Watson and Crick discovered the structure of DNA. The correct name for it is a double helix. Many times it's referred to as a spiral staircase or twisted ladder. If you took a regular ladder and just twisted it up into the kind of a shape of a spiral staircase, you'd have the basic shape of a double helix. The sides of the ladder of the DNA molecule are phosphates and sugars. The nitrogen bases make up the rungs. Two nitrogen bases hooked together from each side of the ladder make up the rungs of the ladder. Along the sides we have phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar, and in DNA that sugar is deoxyribose. It's a ribose sugar missing an oxygen, hence the word deoxy, meaning without oxygen connected to a phosphate, which connects to a sugar, which connects to a phosphate.
here we see the basic structure of what's called a nucleotide, the smallest piece of a DNA strand. We have the phosphate and the, sh the sugar on the side in the round and pentagon shape, and then the rectangular base in the middle. There would be another base to the right connected to another sugar and another phosphate to make up the other side of the ladder. The sugar is, as I said, deoxyribose, hence the full name deoxyribonucleic acid. What you see here is a nucleotide made up of a phosphate, sugar, and a base. One side of the ladder. It's important to understand what a nucleotide is for future references in DNA replication. The DNA molecule consists of millions and millions of these nucleotides all hooked together. If you look carefully in the center here, you can see many different shapes of bases hooked together to make up the rungs of the ladder and the bluish and greenish sides of the ladder, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar on both sides. Two nucleotides make up one rung of the ladder or step of the ladder and millions of steps are included in one DNA molecule. In DNA, there are four nitrogen bases or rungs of the ladder. Cytosine, usually symbolized with a C, thymine with a T, adenine with an A, and guanine with a G. Notice that the C and G always have a triple hydrogen bond between them, and the A and the T always have a double hydrogen bond between them. That's important in determining how they will hook up. C and G always hook up together, and A and T always hook up together because of this. What you are looking at here in this picture are four rungs of a DNA ladder consisting of millions or tens of millions of rungs in one strand of DNA. There are two types of bases in DNA, purines and pyrimidines. Purines have double rings, A and G. Pyrimidines have single rings, C and T. This is another reason that they fit together the way they do, because there's only enough space in the rungs of the ladder, or the base pairs, for a double and a single ring to fit. Two double rings would be too large, Two single rings would be too sm far, small or far apart, so it works perfect when you have a double and a single. Add in the hydrogen bonding of three and two, and you get the perfect reason why C and G always pair up together, and A and T always pair up together.
As previously stated, A and T always fits together and C and G always fits together because of the double single ring fitting spatial requirement and the triple hydrogen bond and double hydrogen bond of A and T, the triple hydrogen bond between C and G.